Hello, my name is Rosie. I am struggling with swollen joints which is painful. I am also having a fever frequently. Can you help me? Hello Rosie, Jane here. I think you are suffering with systemic lupus erythematosus, which is known as SLE. What? Systemic lupus erythematosus? What does that mean? Can you help me to further explain about it? Yes, Rosie, I can help you to explain on systemic lupus erythematosus, which is also known as SLE. Don't worry. With that, we are a group of students from Group 9 who are taking the module OIA2009 Basic Immunology and Pharmacotropy of Immune Disorders would like to present on the disease called systemic lupus erythematosus, which is also known as SLE. In this video, we will discuss about the introduction of SLE and followed by the risk factors which causes the development of SLE Thirdly, the pathophysiology of SLE and the signs and symptoms caused by SLE, followed by the diagnosis, management, and finally, the drug complications. First of all, let's move on with the introduction to SLE. As everybody asks, what is SLE? SLE is basically an autoimmune disease where the immune system attacks its own tissues causing the widespread inflammation and tissue damage in the affected organs. Usually, SLE also attacks multiple organs such as joints, skin, kidney, blood vessels, lungs, and brain. The word systemic in systemic lupus erythematosus means the disease can affect many parts of the body, and the word erythematosus means the reddening of skin, while the lupus word means skin rash. Now, let's move on to the risk factors which causes the development of SLE. The first risk factor is known as age. The people who are aged between 15 to 44 years old has the high risk of developing SLE. And the second risk factor is gender. It says that women is more likely to develop systemic lupus erythematosus compared to men and children. And the third risk factor involved in the development of SLE is the family history. Relatives of people with lupus have a 5 to 13 percent of chance of developing SLE, and fortunately, only 5 percent of children will develop lupus if their mothers has it. And the final risk factor which causes the development of SLE is the race. According to research, it says that Blacks, African Americans, Hispanics, or Latinos. Asians and American Indians or Alaska Natives are more affected due to SLE compared to white people. If you were to ask, what is the risk that can be caused by systemic lupus erythematosus to pregnant women? Actually, women with lupus can safely get pregnant and most will have normal pregnancy and healthy babies. However, all women with lupus who get pregnant are considered to have high-risk pregnancy. Now, with that, let's have a look on the pathophysiology that causes the progression of the disease called systemic lupus erythematosus. In SLE, it is known as a type 3 hypersensitivity reaction which is common and it underpins much of the disease pathogenesis. SLE is usually triggered by unknown environmental factors which is caused by the immune system dysregulation, known as genetic factors, that attacks the body, cells, and tissues. According to the phytophysiology, it is begin by the stimulation of SLE, which causes due to the presence of triggering factors such as ultraviolet rays, bacteria, and others that causing the cell death. These actions result in where the fragments of cellular material which is an antigen form on the cellular surface. This causes the antigen presenting cell which is known as APC to be attracted to the antigen. And then the SLE is caused by the introduction of T lymphocytes to the antigen presenting cell known as APC. Then the cell receptor binds to the major histocompatibility complex known as MHC of antigen presenting cell and this causes the release of cytokines recruitment of more inflammatory cells and the stimulation of beta cells. 
stimulation of beta cells and IgO2 antibody production caused the tissue damage. The production of antibodies against the fragments of nucleus antigens are called anti-nuclear antibodies. Anti-nuclear antibodies will bind to the nuclear antigens, form antigen antibody complexes. These complexes can enter the blood and then drift away to deposit or adhere to the vessel wall in several organs such as kidneys, skin, joints, and eye. And the deposited complex will initiate a local inflammatory reaction which can cause tissue damage through the activation of complement system which followed by a massive cascade of enzyme activation. Now, let's see what are the signs and symptoms caused by the SLE. As we all know, each patient will have slightly different symptoms that can range from mild to severe and may come and go over time. One of the most common signs and symptoms caused by SLE is skin rash. Skin rash can be occurring in many parts of the body. For an example, the butterfly rash or mala rash that appears across the nose and cheeks. Other than that, it also can cause shoulder rash, arm rash and also ear rash. Moving on to the skin rash, skin rash can also appear in areas that get exposed to the sunlight because SLE patients are sensitive to the sun and this reaction is called photosensitivity. There is also a few other signs and symptoms involved in SLE which are fever, swollen and painful joint, fatigue, hair loss, mouth sore and blood clot. Now, Let's take a look on the diagnosis of SLE. There are currently no tests that can directly diagnose systemic lupus erythematosus. Diagnosis can be based on signs and symptoms and lab tests. But there is two important diagnosis methods which are used to identify systemic lupus erythematosus. One of them is antinuclear antibody which is known as ANA testing. ANA testing is a positive test for the presence of antibodies indicates that the immune system has aroused. If you test positive for your ANA testing, the physician may recommend it with further antibody. Secondly, the test that we can use to diagnose SLE is known as American College by Rheumatology Classification Criteria which is also known as ASR Classification Criteria. ASR classification standards are used by some doctors to reach a diagnosis However, the criteria were created primarily for use in scientific research, particularly randomized control trials which require a greater level of confidence and it is possible that many individuals with SLE do not meet all criteria. There is also other diagnosis methods present in order to diagnose the disease called systemic lupus erythematosus, which are complete blood count known as CBC, kidney function test, urinalysis, radiography, renal QS, ECG known as electrocardiogram and finally C3 and C4 complement system level. The low levels of this complement system will indicate the acute flare of SLE. Now, let us dive into the management of SLE. Management of SLE consists of pharmacological and non-pharmacological management. According to the pharmacological management, the first drug that we can use is NSAID. NSAIDs block the enzymes that control the prostaglandin synthesis by reducing the pain and inflammation. Example of NSAIDs that we can use in order to manage SLE is ibuprofen and naproxen. And the second drug that we can use under the pharmacological management of SLE is corticosteroid. Corticosteroids works by inhibiting the production of cytokines which are the molecules involved in inflammatory reactions. And the example of corticosteroid that we can use is prednisone, prednisolone, and hydrocortisone. And the third pharmacological management for systemic lupus erythematosus is antimalarial. Antimalarial controls lupus by modulating the immune system without predisposing the body to infection. Antimalarial also can give protections against UV light. An example of antimalarial drugs involves are hydroxychloroquine and chloroquine. And the last pharmacological management that we can use is immunosuppressive. Immunosuppressive works by down-regulating the immune system by interfering with the DNA synthesis. 
Thus, it prevents the immune cells from dividing, so the cells will eventually die. Example of immunosuppressive that we can use in order to manage systemic lupus erythematosus is azotioprene, mycoplanate, and cyclosporine. Now, let's have a look on the non-pharmacological management. For non-pharmacological management, it is advisable for the patients with SLE to use uh, adequate sunscreen and also smoking cessation, followed by take food with low in saturated fat and high in fish oil diet, and finally avoid stress. Lastly, we are going to look into the drug complications caused by the drugs that have been used for systemic lupus erythematosus. The first drug is NSAIDs. NSAIDs can cause side effects such as stomach ulcers due to stomach irritation, renal and hepatic toxicity, cardiovascular events. Thus, it is always advisable to take NSAIDs after meals to reduce stomach irritations. NSAIDs is also contraindicated with people with high risk of stomach bleeding and renal insufficiency. Now, let's move on with corticosteroid. Corticosteroid can also cause side effects due to long-term use such as changes in appearance, physiological problems and increase in the chance of infection. And corticosteroid can also cause contraindication if stop corticosteroid taken abruptly and it should be slowly reduce the dosage to stop the medication. Now, let's look at the third drug which is anti-malarial. Anti-malarial can also cause side effects due to long-term use, for example, retinotoxicity which can cause pleural deposition and muscle disturbances. Anti-malarial is also contraindicated with patients which has known hypersensitivity to the drug, anemia and neutropenia. And lastly, we are going to look at the immunosuppressive. Immunosuppressive will also cause side effects such as high risk of infections, myelosuppression, hepatotoxicity and nephrotoxicity, infertility. And immunosuppressive is also contraindicated with patients who are having serious infections, pregnant women and also patients who are having bone marrow disease. With that, here is the summary of systemic lupus eichmatosis which were discussed all over through this video. As we all know, SRE is an autoimmune disease where the immune system attacks its own tissues and causes inflammation and tissue damage. And the most common signs and symptoms present in SLE is skin rash, fever and fatigue, painful and swollen joints, loss of hair, blood clots and mouth sore. And the treatments which involved in treating SLE is in order to pharmaceutical, we can use NSAIDs, corticosteroids, antimalarial, and also immunosuppressants. And there is also non pharmaceutical treatments present in order to manage the disease called systemic lupus erythematosus. I think that's all from us for this video. Thank you so much for watching and listening to our video until the end. Don't forget to subscribe this channel and give a thumbs up and leave your comment below. Thank you.